May the hand of the Lord keep us throughout this year. May he be a shepherd to the shepherds. You are a shepherd. The bigger shepherd will shepherd you. You will not be humiliated publicly. You will not be humiliated secretly. His fountain will keep you. His spirit will sustain you. You will not lack instruction throughout this year. The Lord will choose your steps for you. You will not hit your leg against his stone. The womb of the Lord will carry you. The wickedness of this life will not find you. His glory will cover you. His river will flow through you. The Lord God Almighty shall be your mainstay. You will eat and drink and have your whole being. Nothing in your life will be stolen. You will not die this year. You will not be famished this year. Your inheritance will not be stolen. I release the blessing of God upon your life. When you live like he was patient with Jonah, he will be patient with you. He will help you to find your way. Even when you are going in the wrong direction, he will bring you back to the right direction. He did that for Jonah. He said, Jonah, yeah. When humanity speaks, he will intervene. Receive the grace of God Amen. that passes all understanding. Amen. Receive the love of God Amen. that can never be explained. Amen. Father, we thank you. O Kaome, Otokunara, Otokunara, Epubetike, Epubetike, you are good, Jesus. We worship you. Oh, but Tauri Tari Sewolo, oh, Tauri, oh, Tauri, oh, Tauri, oh, Tauri, oh, Tauri, oh, Tauri, his river will flow through you the lord god almighty shall be your mainstay you will eat and drink and have your whole being nothing in your life will be stolen you will not die this year you will not be famished this year your inheritance will not be stolen. I release the blessing of God upon your life. When you live like he was patient with Jonah, he will be patient with you. He will help you to find your way. Even when you are going in the wrong direction, he will bring you back to the right direction. He did that for Jonah. He said, Jonah, yeah. When humanity speaks, he will intervene. Amen. Receive the grace of God Amen. that passes all understanding. Amen. Receive the love of God Amen. that can never be explained. Amen. Father, we thank you. May the hand of the Lord keep us throughout this year. Amen. May he be a shepherd to the shepherds. Amen. You are a shepherd. The bigger shepherd will shepherd you. You will not be humiliated publicly. You will not be humiliated secretly. His fountain will keep you. His spirit will sustain you. You will not lack instruction throughout this year. The Lord will choose your steps for you. You will not hit your leg against his stone. The womb of the Lord will carry you. The wickedness of this life will not find you. His glory will cover you. His river will flow through you. The Lord God Almighty shall be your mainstay. You will eat and drink and have your whole being. Nothing in your life will be stolen. You will not die this year. You will not be famished this year. Your inheritance will not be stolen. I release the blessing of God upon your life. When you leave, 
like he was patient with Jonah he will be patient with you he will help you to find your way even when you are going in the wrong direction he will bring you back to the right direction he did that for Jonah he said Jonah yeah when humanity speaks he will intervene receive the grace of God that passes all understanding receive the love of God that can never be explained father we thank you for the time I want to bring to the microphone our state chairman our daddy in the house yesterday he was with us he is the PFN chairman Kaduna State in the person of Reverend E. E. Bako. let's welcome him with a clap offering 
Thank you, thank you. To God be all the glory in the name of Jesus. Please let's be seated. Before our eyes, the scriptures is fulfilled. The Lord thy God will raise unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren. This prophecy is not just to the Jews, but even to us. Because whenever God raises a man, he becomes a savior. It's a channel of life, a channel of health, prosperity, and restoration. We are blessed that God has raised amongst us our own, one of us, amidst us. And what a joy that is from the pure then. And it's a voice and a blessing to the land, to the state, to the nation, and to the nations of the world. We are privileged and we are honored and we say to God, be all the glory. Amen. Apostle Kure, you may not know how much impact you have made in the land. We want to really let you know that indeed, God has raised you up as a priest over the land. We owe you a lot. Your life has impacted so many of us. Don't forget, there was a night at 11 p.m. I sent you a text that there are so many of us that are looking up unto you. And we are following very closely. And I want to let you know that there's a cloud that is following you very closely. You are not alone. Your labor is already speaking. And uh, it shall be from glory to glory. Yeah. Apostle Kure, we really want to let you know that Salem Hospital is actually giving us hope in the land. It's like our last hope for the common man whenever our, our loved ones are sick. We know of only one place. That we can go in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, and at night. Thank you for making yourself available to God to be a blessing to us. What shall we say of the Salama radio that has given us a voice, not just in the land, but in the state. We are appreciative because of your life. And there is so much more that is coming out of the life of Apostle Kure. The empowerment program that is coming is amazing. There is only one thing we owe Apostle Kure is our prayer that the God of heaven will sustain him. And that the much more that God has put in him, sometimes I say, I just wonder how he's coping, that the Lord will keep him strong, healthy. In July, he was in Kaduna, and uh, for the first time, you know, that he came to the PFN at the state level. I say, if not for PFN, it was not possible for any ministry or church to have him, not because he wouldn't have been there, but because of the engagements. And believe me, that program has made a landmark in Kaduna State that is still speaking up to this moment. We have never ever had that kind of, of a program. And uh, this is the bottom part. That is home. And we are blessed to have you tonight. Our hearts are open to receive from God what he has put in you. With Jesus' joy, let us turn up as we welcome God's servant, our own Apostle Emmanuel Kure that has been a great, great, great blessing. And to me in particular. You have been a blessing to me, sir. A great blessing. Thank you so very much. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead and take that song if they know it. Sing it together. of my spirit, open up. I am with the Father, open up. No boundary, no limit, open up. Let it call of today, open up. Spirit, open up. I am with the Father, open up. No country, no living, open up. Hey, let it call unto thee, open up. Can you get someone to say, Silence of my spirit, open up. Hey, I am with 
Can you open your mouth and ask for the channels of the Spirit? Every road where Holy Spirit, they take waka, let it find me tonight. Let it find you tonight. Any road where Holy Spirit, they take waka, channels of the Spirit, open up. Whatever path that the Holy Ghost uses to reach men, Open up to me. Can you cry for your soul tonight? Channels of the Spirit. Open up. I am a child of the Father. Open up. I am with my Father tonight. So channels of the Spirit. Open up. Lion of Judah. Open up. No boundary, no limit. Open up. Oh, let a deep call unto thee. Open up. Hey, channels of my spirit. Open up. Hey, I am with the Father. Open up. Hey, no boundary, no limit. Open up. Open up on Kafanchan, on Jama'a local government. This is PFN Jama'a or PFN Kafanchan, whichever one you call it. But can we ask the Lord to open up? Open up. Open up. Now, I want you to open your eyes and look at me for a moment in the name of Jesus. First of all, I want to say it's a privilege, sir. Thank you. And I want to thank God for the ESCO. I've been looking for them. I cannot find them. I don't know where they went to hide. You don't put all of them behind. At least the president should be somewhere in front. Come and sit there. Eh? Sit there. That is your seat. Beside the, the state and the scene. No. Go and sit there. It's not humility. You rightly belong in front there. Uh, so that our blessing in Jamaa will not be shaded behind. We are supposed to be in front. Uh, give honor to whom honor is due. I want to say thank you, sir. And thank you for holding the ground. And thank you for making us proud. Thank you for putting in the best you can put. It's the Holy Spirit that brings the harvest. And so we honor God for your life. Haven't done all to stand. Uh, let us wait on him. He will do what he will do. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. Let's put our hands together for the Jamaa PFN. I want to thank God for all the fathers. I thank God for his escort, but I want to go to the fathers. They are some of the most consistent fathers I have known. There are fathers when they hand over, they withdraw and disappear. There is no meeting I've been to that I attended here that I didn't see at least more than half of them. Long after they have handed over in their churches. They are there, Brother Nduba is there. Uh, Johanna, Reverend Johanna is there. Uh, our brother Linus sent me a text. He had to rush home because his mother died. Maybe some of you don't know. But that is to tell you the fellowship we still have. We still keep in touch. Once in a while they send, and some of the older leaders are there, the light is blinding. Oh, Reverend Anya is there, our former leader. He's, they are always there. 
they are always there. And today, can we put our hands and just appreciate God for that? Now, listen, why I have not allowed you to sit down yet is that we are going to pray three very important prayers or four, then you will sit down. Uh, we will do a little more praying after and we will close this meeting. This is just four days into the Israeli Shemite year, what they call Shemite year. Shemite year is a Sabbath year. When God breaks all the, the rules of creation and the earth to impose the rules of heaven in order to restore things the way he wants them. Ah, as the Lord walks through the earth in this season, he will visit you in your house. Can you say Heavenly Father? Tonight I enter into covenant with you. Remember me in this Shemitah year. Shemitah year. In the name of Jesus. Can you pray for yourself for a moment? In this Sabbath year, Shemitah is Sabbath. The Sabbath of harvest. I will explain that after we finish praying later. But remember me and my house and my children. In the name of Jesus. Can somebody say amen? amen. And we are going to pray some more later. But the number two is very important. I've been in Kavanchan for many, many years. Actually, after university, my work started here as a lecturer. Even when I got a job in Lagos to become the public relations officer for Nigerian Ports Authority, NPA, I rejected it. I will never forget that. It's one of the decisive, two decisive moments I don't forget. When I got the job, I rejected it. The person who took it from me, we didn't know they were planning to make me a PRO for them and send me to London as their voice. They sent that person to London, the person from Southern Kaduna who took it from me. Number two, Another thing I will never, there are many things I won't forget, but when it comes to ministry, these are some of the major things. And I rejected it because God said, this is where he has called me. That is why it is significant. In obeying the Lord, I had to reject myself. To refuse myself, what you will call blessings, a major blessing. Just to stay in the place of the Lord. Number two, was a time a whole estate, the keys to a whole estate, was handed over to me if only I will relocate to Port Harcourt. The estate was bought from Shell. Everything was intact from generators, everything. It had its own small football field. It has its own squash. It had its own everything, long tennis. If you have entered Shell, quarters before there is a place for senior very senior officers and intermediate officers no place for small man in those quarters and the keys were with me for seven days and they said I should pray that this sound of the voice of God cannot be effective from Kafanchan. I should come to a place that is ready made and the whole world that is it did the Bible not say we should preach the gospel unto the whole world that the nations of the earth will have, hear it more easily. I hope God is telling a minister something. It's not about where you are or where you stay, where you are located. The anointing does not make choices because it is by it that the world was created. It is by that anointing that the whole world exists. Any 
anybody who wants me to make my, up my mind in one second is telling me to leave Kafancha. I don't need to pray for many days. Because the one who sent me said I should stay here until I hear his next voice. I've not heard it. I was a lot younger. Now I'm getting older. And I've still not had to leave. So I'm here. Even security men later came to ask me to leave. Both from Abuja and here, then, because they cannot secure my life anymore. And I said, the one who told me to stay here, until death do us part, I am staying here. Seven days, I returned the key to the person. And I said, Unfortunately, it pains me I have to return this key. But I don't regret it at all. When you give me a choice between my master's voice and human blessings, I don't know what the master has in stock for me in the future. But I know what he wants for me for now. And I gave them back the key. I said, since you have said the condition for me to have this, is to relocate from Kavanchan. There is already a built-up camp there. They had a big hall that could take, at that time, 3,000 people. At that time, 3,000 people was big. And in Kavanchan, and in Portacot, we would have filled that hall overnight. Because at that time, I was already very popular in Portacot. We were using the Civic Center, which is the biggest place for meetings in Portacot. For our throne room meetings in those days. And I said, no. There you are. And the woman, I will never forget that sister, received it crying. Almost caused me that I have destroyed, that the gospel, oh, if I knew what gift God was giving me. I'm still here. Listen. This land is supposed to be a religious land. The whole of Southern Kaduna. And yet there is so much limitation and poverty. Everywhere the gospel went, people prospered. Not in Southern Kaduna. The gospel has been here with us for many years. But we can't see the prosperity. We are still hewers of wood. Ministers come here, they toil within a few years, everything they did scatter. And they leave. They themselves, something comes to drive them out. If it is no hunger. The spirit of the poverty of the land. And they say, look, let's go out. It will be better for us elsewhere. And they leave. Today, in this Sabbath year, I want us to tell the Lord to terminate that spirit. That would, look. I want us to terminate the spirit that is causing limitation for the gospel in Southern Kaduna. The people are hearing, but they don't seem to be prospering from the world. All this multiplication thing we talk may work in other cities. It works in a limited form. Even the man who is multiplied becomes afflicted. Uh -uh. The churches are here. The pastors are here. Your top men who get multiplied, they either leave the land or in another five years, they go back again to poverty. It's like cycle. If they don't leave, they go back to poverty. And they start behaving like bushmen again. They were the richest men in town. I have known, I have been with most of your churches for many years. I have served with them while I was a lecturer. I preached in almost every Pentecostal church when I was a lecturer. 
Oh, PFN, there was, a there was a time, sorry, CPM, there was a time under Father Abraham. I was the extension, the second leg of CPM here. It was my second house as a lecturer. Then I joined into the grace of God under the fear completion pastor. You know, we were close. They know the history here. That was how I moved around and around and around and around most of the churches. As a lecturer. Bringing revivals who were having a blast. The land where people were running from all over the place. Gideon Wire for deliverance in Syria every night. I don't know that they still run there for deliverance like that. From all over Southern Kaduna. Under Father Abraham. Same thing for grace of God. It was grace of God. I was preaching in grace of God. This grace of God in their former place there. When somebody was sent from Lagos to come and kill me. I was preaching that day. The person followed me to that place and fell at the door of their church. Is that anointing still here? What has happened to us? Fell at the church, sat I shaking. I had finished my preaching and left. I didn't know he followed me. He couldn't enter the church. He stood back. When I left, he didn't know. The pastor had to send for me. Oh, had to follow me. I said, look, sir, we have somebody in the church. We have been counseling, carrying the person through deliverance. Two of them, they came to kill you physically. This happened in grace of God. Many years ago. PFN was a place of deliverance. A city of refuge. Living faith came into town. Within weeks, mad men were getting delivered. Where is that power now? I'm touching all the churches. Right? You know, I know the story. When you call me father here, I'm a father. I've been part of the pains, part of the killings, everything. I carry the marks of Southern Kaduna. Where is that power? Today, that reverend has left the living faith. What happened? And it was from Kafanchan, that seed was sown. To live. He saw great grace. He was always coming to me. The day he reported to town, he reported, I said, Papa, I was told by Bishop Abioye that when I enter this city, I must come to you first. I've obeyed my father, but I am not obeying because of him. I'm obeying because I recognize your unction. He said, I should ask you only one thing. Give me the keys of the land. Wherever your strength failed, my strength will overcome. I said, I you told you that. I said, tell him, say he had no correct. If I give you what I have, what will I have left? I said, this guy is too, it is too wise. And you were bold enough to come and ask me for what I have. He said, yes, sir, even double. And he fell on his face. He said, I won't live until you bless me, sir. Because I can't go back to my father. He will flog me. If I stay here, I won't leave you, sir. <laughs> I laughed. I said, wise man, I was only pulling your legs. I said, stand up. We are, look, look, there is enough field for all of us. There is too much harvest. Go. Anything that stands in your way, tread it down. Any field you can trash, open up. Let it become a vineyard for you. He said, wow, amen. And that was all. I said, you have my blessing and you have the keys. Go and prosper. Because he told me, we have heard that you left everything and you started here, not elsewhere. I said, yes, sir. He said, give me the land open to you. Let the land open to us. Today, if you are barren, I break that barrenness in the name of Jesus. That's why we talk about the channels of the spirit. Asking him to open up. Open up.
forgive me. I know in this coronavirus season, people don't hold hands too much. If you won't hold hand, make sure your hand is touching the next person, even if it's on the one side like that. Otherwise, hold your hands or just touch somebody with your, 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 your other hand, you know. Anyone you choose to do, but there must be a contact. I don't care how you do it. Can you tell the Lord, if we have sinned, forgive us. But tonight, terminate that spirit, the spirits that are tormenting the land, that will not allow the land to be fruitful, both spiritually and physically. Terminate the throne. In this conference, in this Shemitah year, let that spirit die. Let the land see me. Let the land hear me. Let the land prosper me. Let the land bless me. Open your mouth and pray. Tell the Lord it's an agreement prayer. Lift up your heads, all ye gates of heaven, and smash the thrones, the hidden thrones of Leviathan. In southern Kaduna, every principality, power, throne, every spirit of Leviathan, of the dragon, of the serpent, today we break you, we destroy. The set time has come. It's a Shemitah year. We invoke the spirit of Shemitah. Set the land free. Set the land free in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. amen. Somebody shout, Oh God, arise and let the land rejoice from tonight in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout, Hallelujah. Number three or number four. The oracles of the land have not been too faithful as they should be. I want us to ask for a new power of redemption for our pastors and ministers. They have so much they are struggling with that is affecting their efficiency on the altar. There are so much they are struggling with that is distracting them. So much that they are leaving the issues of the altar. And they are looking for other things and becoming carnal. Today, can the blood break that buffeting spirit? Open your mouth and pray. Buffeting spirit. That buffeting spirit against our pastors and ministers. This is a conference. It's a PFN meeting. Can we ask the Lord to challenge those buffeting spirits in the heavenly places and on earth? Even Paul had a buffeting spirit. Can you ask the Lord, destroy the buffeting spirit among our ministers. Release their oracles. Release the anointing. Somebody shout, Oh God, arise, arise, arise. Break the yoke. Break the yoke upon the minister, your shepherd. In the name of Jesus. Lastly, let's destroy that spirit that steals the word from the hearts of men. In Southern Kaduna. The word is sown in their hearts, but it doesn't stay. I repeat, that steals the word. That's why I call them religious people. There is nothing of God that they should know. 
that they have not heard from your mouth severally. It has not, it doesn't stay long. Even in our congregations as Pentecostals, the word seems to be stolen. The word. Is it a curse? Can we ask God to pull out those plants that destroys the world? You know, the world is equal to a seed. Let's ask God to attack every vegetation, every soil that will not allow the world prosper. Any curse on the soil, forefathers that are dead, generational curses. Can we bind them in Southern Kaduna? Let's break that curse. That curse that has kept the land under shadows. Federal government cannot see it. State government cannot see it. Everybody seems to forget. Development comes everywhere. It does not rest here. We were quarreling over that with the governor recently. Why? And he said, you are the cause. Can we ask God to break that cause today? open your Bibles just before we sit down. We want to break the curse according to this word just before you sit down. Amos 8 11. Amos chapter 8 verse 11. Hear this. So when the word does not stay know that it is a curse. It says hear this. The days are coming. This is the declaration of the Lord God. When I will send a famine through the land not a famine of bread or of thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. People will stagger from sea to sea and roam from north to east, seeking the word of the Lord, but they will not find it. Southern Cardinal people travel up to Lagos. I go to the redemption camp, they are full there. Go to Living Faith, they are full there. You know, they go for the annual conferences. Deeper Life, annual conventions in this day coronavirus wasn't stopping us they will hire buses that is one everybody hires buses they go for this place where the ground anointing the pillars of God are they still come back home empty it's a curse the famine of the world is a curse can we ask God to have mercy and break that curse in this Shemitah year. Let the revival strike the land that destroys all the altars of the land and opens a new gate. And let the entrance of the world give life and bring light. Open your mouth and pray. Let God send thunder and scatter the curse. I told you it's a curse. I don't have too much tonight. I'm already finishing. In the name of Jesus. Can somebody say amen? amen. Sit down for a moment. God told me earlier sometime this year. That by a new oath. A new covenant. That he will enter with his people. He will uproot them from the ground. Not the word uproot. He will take them from the ground by force. And he will plant them upon his holy mountain. From where he will prosper. In these last days, our prosperity will come from the mountains of the Lord. Amen. If you go to Isaiah 25, and you start reading from verse 6. Upon this mountain. Upon this mountain. If you have it, put it on your screen. Isaiah 25 from verse 6. And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all, not some people, a feast of what? Everybody say fat things. Ah, 
make your own overthrow the poverty around you. Amen. I say let it overthrow the limitation around you. Amen. Upon there is a mountain. That is why we needed to pray the first prayer we prayed. To take care of the background to what is limiting us. I told you this year is a Sabbath year, Shemitah year. No, look at it because, like I said, how my today I don't. My mission is very simple and direct, and I'm just going to finish it as a father, and I will leave. Next time I will come for other revelations. Ah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Christ I receive the, the spirit and the blessing of, 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 of the Sabbath and by that spirit I place my hand on my head and I enter into a covenant with you I invoke your oath of redemption to go to war against every limitation in my life. Don't spare nothing from tonight until the salvation of the Lord has come to my life. In all the aspects of my life, I receive the blessings due to me. This one year will change my destiny forever. If in Kafan Chan, I don't have an inheritance. In the name of Jesus, uproot me into my place of inheritance. Bring me to the mountain of my inheritance. In the name of Jesus, let the yokes and the oaths against me break now. I prophesy and command that now. In Jesus' name. Can somebody shout amen? amen? Lift that hand to the heavens and say, I receive. I receive. Amen. amen. Can we give Jesus a big clap offering? I want you to be seated for a moment. Listen, on a Sabbath year, it's an abomination for any child of God to remain a slave to anything. Whether a slave to sin 
or a slave to poverty or a slave to limitations. Any kind of limitation. School, you cannot pass exam. We remove that crossbow against you. You cannot prosper in any business. You are just going around. Today, we smite the serpent in your waters. The Lord find them and destroy them. The Lord find them and rewrite your story. The Lord find them and release you. In the name of Jesus. In every year of Sabbath, it's a release. It's a release. It's a year of release. Now, all of Israel and every Sabbath is connected to the Messiah. All of Israel celebrated the Messiah a few days ago, what they call the Rosh Hashanah. The first of Tishrei in their political calendar. In the Christian Hebrew calendar, the year started during the resurrection, the Passover. But for the political calendar, Tishrei is celebrated. Before they were set free from Egypt, when the Lord declared a spiritual calendar over our lives in the Passover, they only celebrated the birth of Adam. The Jews believe that on the first of Tishrei, which was 6th of September this year, was the day God made man, Adam, in his image. So they start counting their calendar from the beginning of the existence of, everybody say man. So how many of you understand what that means now? They call it the Rosh Hashanah. In case you hear that and you say, ah, what are these throne room people talking about? What is Rosh Hashanah again? This is Apostle Kure. With all his big, big grammar. You know, he don't read too much. It's in the shaky head. I've had people criticize him. This guy, he know too much. He did bukuru too much. He did, he did, he did make him go crazy. He did talk all kinds of things we never hear before. It's not a tongue. It's not a prophecy. It's their language. That is what is a Hebrew thing. And who am I to change it and speak it in Jew? Eh? They are not my dialect. So I can't give it a name in my dialect. We can only call, you call Yeshua. Is Yeshua your language? Eh? Is Yeshua your language? You call Jehovah. Is Jehovah your language? You call Elohim. Is Elohim your language? Where did you learn it from? Today, the spirit by which Adam was created up and crowned king. It means this year, God is restoring back the kingship of man. Can you say, Lord, I receive my place. Let the ground shift under me. And relocate me now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I didn't hear somebody say, Amen. Shemitah here, yeah. hey. People bought extra lands in the last month in Israel so that when God walks in the land, eh, he will bless it for them and bless their generations. They were buying ground like water. People in America were sending money home. I was following the issue in the internet. So that a new generation of blessing will open. And we, through Abraham, are entitled to every blessing, not the tithe. Anything God visits Israel with, he will visit us with it. Yes, eh? yes, Did you hear what I said? Yes, ah, I invoke that covenant yes. against every spirit that will resist you when you live here. Yes. At the time when we anoint ourselves tonight, your destiny will change forever. Amen. I didn't hear somebody say amen. amen. Look, the Bible says you are only permitted to be a slave for six years. On the seventh Sabbath year, the seventh year, every slave 
In fact, they call they were they are specific. Every Hebrew slave, meaning every covenant slave. That means if you are born again, the Holy Ghost is entering into a ministry of interfering with your life and what is happening in your life to break you loose to see the light you never saw and to receive the blessings of the Messiah. The Bible says we have been grafted to this blessing according to the book of Galatians through Christ Jesus. And this year's Shemitah particularly falls into the year 5782. The focus of this year is for the Lord to build a habitation for his people. Number one. Two. Is for the Lord to create those things that are not in the life of his people. Things that fulfill prophecy. Things that empower them. He will create it. Even when they don't have ability. So God is not going by our ability this year. He creates it. So that you can actually fully enter into a rest. So that you can actually, I repeat, enter into a rest. Hmm. at Leviticus 21. I think it's from verse 1. No, that is not the scripture I'm looking for. I just saw it now. Suddenly, thank you, Lord. I give you the glory, I give you the praise, I give you the adoration. It's not 25. Put 25 one, let's see. No, it's not verse 4. It's not verse 4. Put verse 4, let's see. My staff are insisting that it's verse 4. No. I'm sorry, sir. I know what I'm talking about. Don't confuse me if you're not sure. I'll get that scripture back to you. But the Bible says there that you are only allowed to be a slave for six years. On the seventh year, that whole year is a year of release. It's a Sabbath year when every Hebrew slave is set free. Every Hebrew slave is set free. I used to preach a lot on that scripture. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Sorry, I want it for a minute because it's very important. Because I want to use it to pray for somebody here tonight. 
and I need, I need, I need to get it. It was in my book. I just saw it, and then and now I cannot see it again. Thank you. Rain, Jesus. I knew it was a 21. Exodus 21 from verses 1. Now, now, everybody say now. now. These are the judgments which you will set before them. Now, just follow that. You, 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 you look at that. You don't need to read after me. Now, look at the judgment God says I have to set before you tonight. If thou buy a Hebrew servant, Hebrew servant, I don't know what has cast a shadow of limitation over you. I place a demand on this Shemitah to pursue your enemies. He says, if thou buy an Hebrew servant, six years alone, he is allowed to suffer. He shall serve. In the seventh year, he shall go out what? Free. free no, not just free. Free for what? Free for what? He won't owe anybody anything. Today, even if you owe, the ground will open a provision for you. Can you command the chains to break? Open your mouth and begin to command every chain. Break, break, break break. Even if I owe, I command and prophesy that the provision come. Break. In the name 
name of Jesus. Now, listen to the word of the Lord. And this is the more interesting part. If he came in by himself, that means if Nahim put himself for trouble. Eh? On the Sabbath year, he go ask for forgiveness and say, God, now me carry my leg, go sell myself. Now I make this man, they slap me every day. I repent. The Bible says he shall carry himself, his leg, out of that trouble. Are you willing to start the process? God will not allow me to say anything else tonight. This is the core of the mission of the Messiah this year. Everyone that is smitten must be comforted. Must be healed. We have all suffered the side effect of this coronavirus lockdown, economy slowing down, people cannot move, money is nowhere to be found. Today, even if there was no money, I prophesy to the channels of the Holy Spirit to prophesy and create money for you. He said, if he came in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If we were married, then he and his wife, they shall go out together. Nobody will be left behind. Can you say, Heavenly Father, carry me go tonight. In the name of Jesus, break the chain. Let your word break my chains. And release me in the spirit. And release me in the physical. In the name of Jesus. I didn't hear somebody say amen. If you were there during the Rosh Hashanah, which we treat almost the same as our crossover, you will have heard me quote This other scripture. Listen, my beloved. It's a sin for the earth in this year to hold you in one place. It's a sin against God that promotion does not come to you this year. I want to emphasize the seriousness of the matter. That is why you must seek God in his mountain for your movement forward. You must repent and return to the Lord. Look. The word repent in the Hebrew language means return. To return. That's the meaning. Simple. So when you tell them to repent, it means return. And it's not only sinners that return. Eh? Righteous men will be small road. Then they return. You know go work a loss at all. You must return. I prophesy to your spirit to return. I say I prophesy to your spirit to return. And everything that has been stolen from you. Houses, promotion. I prophesy that this year restores them back. In the name of Jesus. I didn't hear somebody say amen. I want you to sit down. Go back. You return for what? Go back to First Peter chapter 2. Verse 5. I told you, it's the year of God building a habitation. Building a habitation. What do you return to? All of us must humble ourselves and learn to repent quickly of all our faults, our flaws. Because it's only through repentance you return. And when you go to repentance, it means confessing your weakness, your inability, your, your limitation. It is not just confessing iniquity. It's not just confessing your mistake. Confessing that 
I have no power of my own. Brokenness, humility. I have no power of my own. I confess. I confess to you, Holy Spirit. is lifted up. It's only the humble. Some of us, because we are ministers, we are no longer broken. We have lost our brokenness. When you break, you lose your brokenness, you lose your holiness. It's so easy to fall away. Satan cannot touch you if you are a broken reed. It's difficult. He cannot condemn you because before he has condemned you, you have already condemned yourself and gotten release from heaven before he touches you. A broken spirit does not contain or keep sin. He cleanses it immediately. He removes it immediately. Because he knows his father is too holy to dwell in that place. So he takes himself out. So the serpent does not smite. Have you not read in your Bible, he that breaketh the edge, the devil will smite. Why do you keep tempting God? And when you see the repercussion, you start blaming God for not saving you. When you know your greed took you there. When you know your lust took you there. The Bible says, where is, where is there conflict among It's not because we, we lost. We desire and we get not. You do all kinds of terrible things. And when you don't get, you go like Jonah to start complaining. And start crying, Lord, why have you allowed the son to smite me? This year, it's a broken spirit that will be lifted up. So you need to learn brokenness, sincere brokenness, to fall on your face and learn brokenness. And that's why that Peter, that Peter says this, because this is a year of sacrifice. You must spend the year bringing living sacrifices to the Lord and the Lord will bring you visitations. The Lord will tend your ground. The Lord will heal your ground. So it's a year of bringing living sacrifices so that the Lord can heal your land. What does it say? It says, Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house. I want you to note a word there. That you, what the Holy Spirit daily does in your life is to try to build up what? A spiritual house have you lost your spirituality a spiritual house you are built up as a spiritual house when Satan comes against you is the spritual house he sees first that is what controls the elements on your behalf that's what controls the physical on your behalf that is what brings you favor I'm sorry I couldn't come yesterday. I took permission from them and begged them. I'm sure they told you that. To be abstinent. Something was very important was happening to Christendom. A Christian bank was being started. A non-profit Christian bank. And the Lord made me find favor to be one of the 25 in this nation. That were called together to midwife that bank. Lusting. This is a Shemitah year. Why will a bank that will redeem Christians be born in a Shemitah year? And on the third day of that Shemitah year, yesterday was number three day of Tishrei. Today is number four. Why was your meeting ordained to stand on the start on the third day, the day of the Messiah, number three? The number of the Messiah. Why was your meeting built to stand on the third day and the fourth day? Both days are covenant days. Today, may your cycles be visited. May your story be changed forever. 
no more slavery. Amen. I didn't hear somebody say amen. amen. Revelation chapter 12 verse 16. Put it on the screen. What does it say? And the earth. Look, this is the, it is a year when God renews his covenant with the earth, the land. So that it can produce more. It can sustain more. It's a Sabbath for agriculture. Shemitah is spelled S-H-E-M-I-T-A-H. -H, in case you want to do a study on it. You can Google it. Shemitah year. Hebrew Shemitah year. And read anything you can read on it. It's connected to agriculture. But it's much more than that. If you go into the book of Revelation, God is going to use the earth to protect the covenant of the church. Is there any book of Revelation? The Bible told the angels to go destroy the earth, but he said, stop. You must mark the saints, and number two, you must not touch the vegetation. He said, don't touch, don't smite the vegetation. Because that is what will feed the saints. Look, in this season when the Messiah brings up the glorious church, the church will be glorious physically and spiritually. Yeah. It will be prosperous physically and spiritually. Yeah. You know, I discovered something in the government house about a month or two ago. When we went visiting with the governor and discussing Southern Cardinal issues. I said, no wonder. They were distributing money. Agric money. It was meant for everybody. But I noticed that here in Kavanchan, only one side seemed to be wearing new clothes. And they walk this. They no longer want to fight us again. They prefer the peace now. Because they will lose their money. And they can't use it freely here. Money is coming here. And I asked His Excellency, why have we not seen our share? Why have the Christians not seen their share? Famine will run away from you. I say famine or famine will run away from you. Today, if you are naked, receive your clothing for the year. If you are smitten, be healed in the name of Jesus. 12.16 says, And the earth Help the woman. This is the spirit that I shared in our, in our meeting there. This was a key scripture. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. This year, this year, every flood released against you, this ground will swallow it up. I profess that from now, blessing of the ground it will fill your void in Jesus name I cause your devourers to die in the name of Jesus so it's a year of war it's a year when God rearranges things all over the world. He will arrange the things that has to do with Israel, the prophecies around Israel. In fact, the government had to warn all the enemies of Israel. Don't take advantage of the Semitic year and attack us. You will regret it for life. That is to tell you that even the president, the head of state, knows the revelation of Yahweh for this year. I repeat, I read it myself. I watched it myself on television. President Bennett was warning the enemies of Israel. He said, don't think because it's Shemitah. You will take advantage of it. If you dare, heaven and earth, you will be able to stand the volleys that will fall upon you. Today, may fire answer your enemies. Yeah. 
So it's a year when God is restoring covenant. Covenant. He's digging us out. He's propping us back. It's a season of restoration. But it comes with brokenness and repentance. Repent means return. Brokenness. You don't struggle over sin. You don't tell people lies to cover your sin. At the worst, if you cannot tell the truth, keep quiet and leave that place. And go and cry. Like Peter did. And say, Abba, Father, have mercy on me. I betrayed you there. I'm ashamed. I didn't answer them. Forgive me my pride. Peter's case, he even answered them. He said they were the liars. He said, me? I don't know him. The woman said, I know you. You are one of his disciples. I don't know him. Second person came. Ah, this one, you are looking for my trouble, oh. Can't I relax here? Yeah? I said, I don't know him. The third person came and the cock crew. And then Jesus turned back and looked at him. Ah, what did he do? His heart break. It's of certain to keep on arguing, I don't know him. He ran to a corner and wept. The broken spirit. You must wear the clothing of brokenness. You must not deny him again. You must not deny him access to your altar. To your covenant. Each time you do those things, you deny him. Each time you compromise. Actually, one of the accusations of the Lord, let me be blunt with you because I'm a prophet. Against the church, the ministers in Southern Kaduna, is that we have left the commission God gave us. And we are busy pursuing, if it is not recognition, we are looking for ego, money. And we are flogging the congregation because they are not giving you enough. Are you not supposed to be feeding me? If I don't do this, will I feed? You have become so carnal that the Holy Ghost has lifted because he is grieved. And God said, it is brokenness in this season that will restore back your hair. Bring, put back that Peter. The Peter scripture. Put it back if you can. Uh -huh. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer what? Sacrifices. This year you have to be offering sacrifices acceptable for the land to keep Sabbath with you. If you will continue in your magu magu, the land is going to corner you and smite you. Maybe that is why God said we should call for this meeting. We must break away from every com uh, compromise. He said, put it again. To offer up spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God. By who? Brokenness, humility. Running away from every kind of evil con concupiscences. Can you say, Lord, open the heavens and remember me in this Sabbath? In Jesus' name. Amen. The last scripture, now sit down so that I can go. It's Habakkuk chapter 3. God is entering it is by covenant. If you go to Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 2 and 3. It is by covenant God carried Israel from Egypt to Canaan. The Lord our God made a covenant with us. So God is saying, can you go back home and by yourself? Make a new covenant for Passover. For your, that means enter into an agreement with him. 
What do I mean by that? Lord, I have come to enter in agreement with you to carry me through this year and make this year, make it. Make the year bless me. Write it down in case you will forget. I am inviting you to enter into covenant by covenant with me to carry me as this year and break the curses and restore my businesses, restore my waters, restore my promotion by covenant. What does verse 3 say? The Lord made not this covenant with our fathers who didn't know him, but with us. Even us, who are all of us here alive this day. That covenant kept them alive. That covenant provided for them. I'm showing you scripture for scripture. Because this is not an arigo noise making meeting. It's a revelation and a rebirth meeting. From the, into the mountains of the Lord. So you will walk in that mountain. And you will be invisible. Nothing can touch you. But it is by covenant he will lift you out. The scripture puts it differently in Habakkuk. Let me show you what is happening now. In this year, God will go for the salvation of his people. By salvation, is not just getting born again. I'm not talking about born again. It's releasing you from every entanglement of limitation. Amen. Habakkuk chapter 3. I mean Habakkuk chapter 3, not verse 1. Verse 9 first of all and verse 13. Thy bow was made quite naked. That means God has opened his bow. He's no longer holding back his hand. According what? Everybody? According to the oaths of the tribe. That means God entered into an agreement, an oath with each tribe, each human being, each generation, each family. Can you call your family together and hold a prayer meeting and say, Lord, we have come together to enter into an oath with you to start a generation of blessing through us. Every covenant you do at this beginning of the Sabbath, God will make the earth follow you with it. God will say, you see this child, when the Sabbath began, he made a covenant with me. So, break the veil. He will tell the earth, remove the veil. He will tell Satan, remove the veil. Everything you see in that Isaiah 25 is about removing veil from 6 to 8. Removing veil. Verse 7 tells you that, and the veil was broken. The Bible says that in this mountain shall the Lord destroy all the veils that is cast upon all people and the nations. It's from the place of covenant. That is it. When you, once you, build, you enter into a covenant with God, you have set a mountain, an altar that God will bear witness. Laban, after Jacob had entered into covenant with him, Jacob made a comment. The Lord shall be a witness between you and me that we have made this agreement. So that when we are not with each other, if anybody breaks it, God will smite him. A covenant is what God carries out because it's his oath. Invite God. Do holy communion. You don't need to invite your pastor into this matter. It's seconding Allah between you and God. May I get my secret to I have survived many deaths in Kafajan. I'm still sitting. It's covenant. It's not power or might. A Muslim came to me and said, Look, Kachima I said, What did you say? He said, I am a Muslim and I am a very serious one. Nobody touches me. No Christian. It's an abomination. But please, can you lay your hands on me and, and give me that medicine? Pray that prayer of invisibility that you have. Pastor Mike, my former pastor, was there. In the rain, the man left the rain. A, a big manager in Nepal from Kaduna. He 
the senior manager were having a crisis with the local Nepa here. Abuja had to call Kaduna to come and intervene. So the manager, a Muslim, so that there can be no, there can be no partiality. There is no daddy daddy stuff. So they chose a Muslim to come and settle the quarrel between us here. And we said we didn't need Nepa again. And we were using generator throughout those two years, I think. Akbata, you were involved in that crisis. Mike, uh, Mike what? Daniels was a key person in that particular crisis. And that man came. And I was driving out. I allowed the administrators to handle him. That's an administrative problem. I have made up my mind. I will have nothing to do with Nepa again. This chop, I chop people's party. I don't have time for that. I won't go to hell. They say if one hand makes you sin, cut it off. Nepa won't take me to hell. I'm sorry. It's because of my pattern. That is why I am still here, JJ. I for don't die a long time ago. So if it's working for me, I will keep to you who wants to eat quickly. Go and eat and die. Me, I will still grow fatter than you. JJ, I will be taking each step and JJ will be going higher. Did you hear what I said? They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They will not just renew. They will mount. They go higher. Like eagles. So why should I struggle with a dead man? Who will die before me? And the man saw me passing and he ran. He entered the rain. He, he said, he told me, who is that? The man in the car. He came out from one of your offices. I saw people following him to his car. He said, that's my father in the law. That's our guy. He said, what is his name? Doesn't he know I'm here? He said, his name is Kure. Daddy Kure. Emmanuel Nuhu Kure. He said, what did you call him? He said, I have heard that name before. Is that not the man troubling the Muslims in Kafancha? He said, I don't know that. He said, no. That's the man using spiritual power. He said, you would understand. I was in a committee that was meant to kill him. Daniel is alive. Mike Daniels is still alive. I mean, I'm not talking about people who have gone home. He said, I was in a committee that was meant to kill him from Kaduna. We came here and stayed for three days. The man was on the ground. We couldn't touch him. He said, this is your gate. There is a fire there. He said, we got to the office and we got confused what we came to do. And all of us were talking and we got carried away by other things and left. Three times we attempted. And then we told ourselves, look, it's like touching this man is haram. He said, is he really the one? He said, yes. He said, wait. So Mike thought he was coming to finish the work they didn't do. He ran into the rain. He was shouting, wait, wait. So I slowed down just by the gate and stopped. And he ran. I was saying, wind down, wind down, because it was raining. I wonder, he said, sir, are you the imam of this place? I said, yes. I said, yes, sir. That is the way I answered. I said, yes, sir. I am the imam of this place. He said, Please bless me, sir, with the spirit of invisibility. Just touch me. Something will happen. He said, I beg you, sir. I said, why? He said, touch me. You don't know. That was why God sent me here. I am the Nepal. He called his big name. He's a very senior manager. He called the name. I can't remember whether he was a principal manager or whatever from Kaduna. He said, I was sent here to settle your matter. But today, that matter is settled already. Touch my head. 
He said, God sent me for you to touch my head. It's not to settle your matter. I'm going back to Cardinal after he touched my head. Touching his head settled our case for us. Something is going to settle your case this year. I say something is going to settle your case this year. I confess to you, Holy Spirit of the Lord. offer what? Spiritual sacrifices. Houses to offer sacrifice. So today you must become a built one. You must allow the world, the spirit, to build you into a spiritual house that offers spiritual sacrifices. And part of the sacrifices include covenants. Covenants of redemption, of reclamation. Go and search your scriptures on redemption. And begin to pray redemptive prayer over everything. Reclamation prayer. Restoration prayer. Over everything. I say, God, you will lead the way and I will follow you. This land will visit me and build everything. He will build a physical. And even if there was nothing, he will create it. Is there in Isaiah 45, 7 and 8? Please put that so that we can start praying tonight. Isaiah 45, 7 and 8. What did he say? I formed the light. So all this thing you are talking. He said, and create what? May God create darkness for your enemies. Yeah. When they come, they won't see where you are. Yeah. I said, I. He said, I, God. I formed the light. And I create darkness. I can do and undo. Put it back. He said, I make peace. And I do what? Yeah. I create evil to torment people. These are the scriptures for this Sabbath. You will tell God, form light for me. Create darkness for my enemies. Make peace for me. Or you create evil for everybody who will follow me. Make chuku chuku follow them. Somebody say chuku chuku. I didn't hear somebody say amen. amen. I'm giving you the scriptures why you don't say you didn't. There were no scriptures. I don't, I'm not that kind of preacher. I live by the word of God. By every word that comes out of the mouth of God. I don't live by infatuation. I don't even live by positive confession. You know what I just said? I live by the word. Every word that comes out of the mouth. I, I don't positive confess it. I proclaim it. It is written. Nobody can argue that, uh, that one with me. And I walk on it. I'm not trying to have faith over the word. The word has spoken... If it does not fulfill itself now, God will set a procession around me. You can't touch me. It will be. We'll keep on hanging there until my salvation comes. But you won't overthrow me. My portion will remain. Say my portion will remain. Look at it. I form the light and I make peace and create evil. I the Lord do all these things. Verse 8. Drop down ye heavens from above and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open. The earth again open. And let the earth bring forth 
Salvation. For who? For you. And let righteousness spring up together. I have created it. It's a creative year. It's a year for creativity from heaven. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. I, the Lord, I have created it. I, the Lord, I have created it. I have created it. That's why I said, God, I mean, God said, there shall be no slave. Can you go and settle your matter by covenant? Habakkuk, while we are yet standing, Habakkuk chapter 3. We read about God entering into oaths with the tribe. Can you jump to verse 13? Okay, before you go to 13, go back to that 9. The last bit says, after you have entered into covenant with God, God will make the covenant to hold the earth by the throat, to cleave to the earth, to hang on to the earth. So any agreement you make and you break bread, I say, God, we break this bread to seal this agreement between you and us. Eh? Listen, you will forgive me, Ejo. I know we all come from different churches with different uh, beliefs and doctrines. You will forgive me. When you finish, you will, the whole family alone will sanctify the head of the family, whoever is head, will serve the bread to everybody as a high priest of the family. That is not unscriptural. And if the head of the family is dead and the mother is there, the mother will serve it. But that is not all. Though. When you finish drinking, the bottom plate of the pot, because it's a Sabbath here, you will pour it on the ground and say, God, let this be witness between you and me. And leave it there on your ground, in your house. It's your secret with God. Ah, abomination is sanctified blood. Yes. That's why people fight Bishop Oedipo sometimes. When he calls the blood of sprinkle, everybody becomes people. But because it's a Sabbath year, it's blood that speaks. The blood of sacrifice. You just drop it. And you go, forget about everything. The same way you anoint the ground. I didn't say take anointing oil and anoint. It's not anointing oil season. It's the demand of the Messiah. It's the law of the spirit that the year that the land must keep a Sabbath to you. Must help you. Must help you recover. You will take the dregs, the bottom. <laughs> this man told me that if I like, let me criticize him. That is his problem. Bakari. He said in his church, they have a habit. He said, he doesn't care who is criticizing him. That after they finish taking the communion, the bottom, he will tell everybody, drop it on your finger and mark your head. Let God remember, God, this thing, I just finished eating this one. You must keep the oath. Now you swear, no be me. The Bible says, by two immutable things, God cannot lie. Now you swear. Keep your oath. The blood washes sins, defends. So arise. Say, Kure, I'm telling you my secret. I said, sir, all of us have secrets. Can we leave that alone? Listen. I am commanding you how to enjoy this Sabbath. He said, thou didst cleave the earth with rivers. He took the word that he made, the oath he made with the tribes, and he made them to cleave to the earth, to hold the ground bound, to keep his oath in our lives. Verse 13. Everybody read that verse 13. Everybody. Thou wentest forth for the salvation. Are you his people? He went out to fight your enemies to release you from them. He went for the salvation. He went after the salvation. He went to argue with everybody that argues against your life. He said, thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people. Even for salvation with thine anointed. Thou did what? Woundest the head out of the house of the wicked. That means every circling witchcraft, the head of witchcraft in every family that are connected to you, he cuts them off. Even when you don't know them, he will find them and cut them. How many of you?
of you are still blessed tonight. Because my God's grace is the last scripture we are reading directly like this. Listen to me. He says, Thou wounded the head out of the house of the wicked by discovering the foundation on which they stand unto their neck. Everything that gives them power, God will dabaru them, every one of them. Take these two scriptures and go and settle your mortar when you live here. Let this become a new year for all of us. Between now and next September, those of you who didn't have houses, I don't care whether you are widows, our own widows in throne room are building their houses. You will build your own house. No, it's not that we are giving them money. We are not giving them money to build houses. If you say we share food with some of them, yes, every month. But, not give money to build house. Some of them are Akara and Kosei and the mudus of rice. Their mudus of rice have become bags of rice. Before the sun comes down, the rice is finished. So now they are buying bigger bags and they are selling more and they are building their houses. Some of them have taken back paying school fees. We used to pay school fees for their children. They pay their school fees. The land will keep a Sabbath for you. So I'm not telling you miracles we are not experiencing, we are not enjoying. I'm not telling you stories that don't happen. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Where is your covenant? Let your covenant place a demand on the earth. Go and make a covenant when you leave this place with God. Don't stop this religious spirit. Have your personal covenant. Everybody has his secret with God. Create one for yourself. I told the local government chairman when he first became local government chairman, I mean the immediate past one, I'm told there is a new one now. And all of them are born again. That's interesting. And all of them used to fight. They fight for the land. That's why I don't know who to bless or curse amongst them. I mean it. I know all of them. I know all of them. I know the new one. I know the old one. The new one was in Yalkoa's time. Because of his love for the land, they cast him off. He was an exile for a while, for those of you who don't know. The new one. How APC accepted him and make him king again is the mystery of covenant. And I will tell you how. That is a secret we will talk another day. It's between me and him. Listen. This new one came in by covenant. He came all the way from Potako to win the election. I mean the old one. Came in from Potako to, he was not here. He was not known in the land. He came in, went into covenant with the Lord and took the land. This year we'll find something for you. Amen. Covenant is one of the most powerful tools that the church has. My children live by covenant. They are in America not because of me. Sincerely, my money has nothing to do with it. I can't give you admission. They made their covenants. They did. Some of them fasted 30 days. Some of them fasted 40 days. They got their admission. Baba, you don't have money. We will fast money down for you. And the money, if it must not come through you, it will come through other people. Who says you must be the one paying? And for some of them, the first two years, somebody else paid. I didn't pay. The boys took it by force. The girls took it by force. There is no young man in covenant. My younger generation, my little brothers and sisters, go and enter into covenant God will make you great. Covenant is the power tool, the powerhouse of the church. Prayer by covenant and a sacrificial life. If you live by covenant and you live sacrificially, you'll be invisible. Sacrificial life. Sacrifice. That's the core of Peter. Sacrifice. Put that scripture back. It says, up to the foundation. So this year, the foundations of them that trouble you will be removed. Amen. And the Lord shall lift you up. Amen. When you read this, you read from 13 to 15. We are not reading to 15 today. We are stopping here tonight. Listen today. If you know you are, want to be part of the harvest of this Shemitah year, that you want to enter into a new phase in your life, another time I will come back 
we will continue to this next level of covenants. There are other things I will have spoken, but we won't enter into it. It's the year of voices. Even your enemies will hear from God. God will be warning them like he warned those kings not to touch Abraham's wife. So if you touch Sarah, I will kill you. From today, your enemies will hear the voices of God. Because it is a year of the voice of the Son of God. The Messiah, our God. So use covenant to bring forth that voice. Let the voice speak for you. I, oh, my father. I don't live by myself. I live by the finger of God. I go to nations and they put red carpet. I come down from the plane. People are waiting. Sir, are you the prophet Kure? These days they call me Apostle Kure. Are you the Apostle Kure? Yes, sir. He said, please follow me. Be arrest. No, they don't arrest me. They take me to a VIP LP room where my reception party is waiting for me. Why they are busy rejoicing, we are thanking God for safety. They have stamped my passport. They bring the passport back. Oh yeah, let's go. Follow me. I follow them. And we drive into town. From Kenya to Zambia. I have the VIP treatment. Do I look like one that has VIP? They're no right and for face. Somebody say covenant. covenant. Covenant will create another kind of life for you. Having a spiritual house and living sacrificially plus covenant will take you wherever you want to go. So can you go and uproot all this, your banza show off, all this, your shakara where you do all this, yanga, all this noise, you they boast like, you they talk, you want to argue space with somebody. My father owns the whole earth. Take this space. I will take all the field you cannot carry. I don't do that nonsense. And that's why in a hard land, the Lord is prospering us. The land is hard. But every village we enter, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And it's not even me going. It's those who have anointed and released. Hey, I got my share of beating all over Southern Kaduna. They used to beat us. Me, I got my beating. I don't know him, but I got my own many times. I was a lecturer and they were beating me. I was married with children. And they were beating me like small child. They will beat their children at home that are in secondary school. They will beat me, their lecturer. My biko is still there. We were beating together in, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Kagoma, uh, 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 Tsekia. Is it Tsekia you call it? Beyond Kagoma. Eh? Tsekia Neko. They led Sariki Moses. Thank God he came to me before he died to reconcile with the Lord. He said, Rishin Seni Neka Imani Ankuri. Su Baba Mari. They became our closest friends before they died. Very close. But they ordered us to be beaten in any village in Jabba we have found. And Baba Mari was law. I bear the marks of the gospel. Where is your own? You want to look like me? Oh yeah, go collect your bulala. Except the seed dies, it abides alone. He slept in the marketplaces here. For the, we begged him not to sleep on the benches here. Come, we will give you a price, give you everything, give you a house. The guy refused. The first days he came, it was here mosquitoes and market. He and the megards were struggling for space in this inner town Kafanchan market, the old one. What are you talking about? You think God forgets those days? You see, in PFN chairman, it isn't a politics. This is one man politics did not put into chairmanship. It's by the finger of the Holy Ghost. Who is behind you? Where is your covenant? Where is your faithfulness? Where is your brokenness? Where is your sanctification? Where is your holiness? Where is your faithfulness? This day has come. Lay your hands on me. Today has come. Today has come. Lay your hands. Lay your hands on me.
Some strange mosquitoes will eat all your enemies up. I don't want to go into examples. People respect me not because we are a big ministry. We were once a very small ministry. So we started from Bidda Street. For those of you who don't know. We used to borrow Bauta, Bauta's fellowship place. Where Linus was pastor. Before... Reverend Lightner started church. They were with Bauta Mesanda. Bauta died. That was where Capro was meeting. I was the head of Capro. That was where throne room started. And we had our office on Bidda Street, room and parlor. It was one room first. Then we became rich enough and powerful enough to add the parlor, the another room. We, Took another room. That was a sign we had arrived. That was the day. I think that table is still there. I went and carved the table for myself. I drew the, the drawing for the carpenter. Eh? Like that. So that he, it, it is an executive. And I told him to put a carpet on top. Bushman. Now carpet then they put on top table. But those days. It was a chief executive chair. Who told you we didn't start from small? Who told you I just came as lecturer and became? Mind you, I said I got beatings. I once only had my leg swaging. Then I had a motorcycle. Then I had this one small car. Then I began to grow small, 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 small. Now, any car I desire, I can have. It's just that the gospel restrained me. Deliberately, I am what I am by God's grace and by choice. Start choosing properly, and your destiny will change. Don't copy anyhow. This gospel is not anyhow, it's a work of the spirit. Let the spirit do the work for you. It's a Sabbath year today. If you know you have something to settle with God so that God can change your life. Issues, disobediences of any kind, lack of fellowship, you have lost fellowship, you are too lazy to reconnect fellowship. You know it inside you that something is wrong with your spirituality. But you just manage, carry yourself to church, manage, carry yourself back, say praise the Lord for everybody, but you know there is an emptiness inside. 
Sometimes the emptiness is caused by disobedience or by the lust of this world. Love not the world, neither the things in the world. If you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. The two of them don't occupy the same body. That's why you must build a spiritual house and make a spiritual sacrifice. That is where I am. Archbishop John Prince was giving in a seminar in a smaller meeting at the redemption camp on prophecy and prophets or something. And at a point he stopped and he made an example. I didn't know he observes me. He said, for example, that is why people like Kure pray 24 hours. When they are walking, they are still talking to the spirit. Everything is spirit, spirit, spirit. That is the yoke of the prophet. He's praying inside when he's not praying outside. He enters a car. My driver will tell you. I don't know how many times I pray a day. When I enter the car now, I'll say, thank you, Jesus. When we arrive home, I will say, thank you, the driver. If I don't say thank you, Jesus, he will move. My driver has gotten so used to it that if he thinks I have forgotten, and I've not forgotten, he will wait. When he sees I'm delaying too much, he says, prayer. <laughs> now, I'm telling you my life. God has built a spiritual house for himself. Are you a spiritual house? Oh, Chatham by Kine. You walk with an empty spirit and you want miracles to happen. Pastors, you walk with an empty spirit. Go back. Return. Somebody say return. return. I don't know how many times I pray a day. That's a, sometimes I kneel down and finish praying, stand up, and I forgot I just finished praying. I go back again and kneel down a second time and start the prayer all over again. My wife will say, quote, You just finished praying. I said, yes, I just remembered something else. So it is not enough. I'm going back. Ah, the Bible says, even the one who you know, ask, he knows, he will answer. Not with me. I will ask. Don't tell me that one. He said, I should ask and I will receive. It's simple grammar. Uh, let him know I registered it. Let it be that I say, and him forget. No, be me forget. My obedience must be complete. My spirituality. I don't copy other people. I don't. I am original. Stop all this copy, copy. That's why you are empty. Let the Spirit of God bring you to the place of grace. Let Him be the one carrying you in prayer. Your foolishness will become righteousness with God. How many of you are ready to approach heaven like a child? Today you know there is something you ought to settle, a void. You ought to return to. I want to leave that seat and move forward here. And let's pray together quickly. If you are coming out, come out quickly. Just rush out. You want to reconcile something? Pray over something? You are empty, including sin. Including disobedience. You have lost touch with the Holy Spirit for one reason or the other. Only you know the reason. You don't feel the power of God like you used to feel Him before. It's a Shemita. The Lord will seek out your salvation tonight. Quickly. Just keep on repeating, have mercy on me. 
I have come to behold your mercy. I have come to experience your mercy. I'm standing here for mercy. I've come before your mercy seat. Have mercy. Forgive me my sins. Forgive me my disobedience. Forgive me for my slumber. For every weakness in my life. My prayerlessness. My unrighteousness. My secret sins, adulteries, fornications. Forgive me. Forgive me for my lying spirits. For showing off. For claiming to be what I am not. Today I've come to empty myself. Empty myself of all my excesses. Have mercy. Wash me. Purge me in the blood. I repent. I return to be cleansed. I return to be redeemed. I return to be saved. I return to be marked. I want to be marked by you. I return to be overhauled. Overthrown. All the strange altars in my life. I permit you. I invite you. Oh God, arise and visit me again. Arise and set me on fire again. Arise and restore your altar in my heart. If you forgive me, restore my altar. Can you begin to demand? Lord, if you forgive me, restore my altar. Let me see my signs again. Let me see my wonders. Let me see my miracles. If you forgive me, Restore, restore my signs, my miracles, my wonders. Restore my dwelling in you, in the heavenly places. Restore. Restore my glory on earth, in this earth. The glory that I have with the Father. Thank you, Father. Can you put your hand on your chest? Can you say, Heavenly Father, the secret places belong to you. Today, enter into my secret place in the name of Jesus and flush out of my life every excesses, everything that drives away the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I plead for your redemption. For your washing by the blood of Jesus. For your reconciliation to me now. The reconciliation of my heart. My soul. My body. Recover me now. From everywhere where I have been scattered. Spiritually and physically. Recover me. I enter into your oath. Of salvation. I confess my salvation. In Christ Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let your spirit keep a Sabbath with me. And start a divine visitation. Therefore today. I proclaim over your life. That you are redeemed and saved. In the name of Jesus. That by your confession you are forgiven in Jesus name. That today, that which smote you, let their hands wither. Yeah. Let the spirit of sin wither. Yeah. The spirit of disobedience wither. Yeah. The blood of Jesus rebuke your infirmity now yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Can you say, Heavenly Father? I receive a new spirit and a new testament of the Lord Jesus Christ in my heart, in my soul. I welcome the Messiah, Jesus my Savior. I welcome him into my space, spiritual space and physical space. 
take over Lord Jesus and reign today I enter into the covenant of the Shemitah open the gates of your Sabbath let a new heavens go before me I proclaim my new heaven I proclaim my new earth I proclaim my harvest I receive it and I give you the glory thank you for the mantle in Jesus name I didn't hear somebody say amen. amen now if you don't mind just remain standing because I want to pray this extra prayer with you listen because this is very important if you know this land has robbed you of anything you know we prayed at the beginning that the shadow over the land be terminated everything that meets people people get rich and become poor here I will never die a poor man here I'll keep on building and building like somebody said it's like you until the day you die you continue to build I said it's a sign of prosperity I keep on building until there is no land to build on today if you know there is any kind of contention over anything in your life I'm talking about promotion and other things that is coming from the land even from outside the land now here they meet you I want you to leave your seat and join them because I'm going to pray last prayer and I'm done for today I've given you assignment already when you go home do your assignment invite your family or those who are with you and say come let us hold hands together put communion bread at the middle put communion bread at the middle and say God open the gates of the Sabbath to us and open your scripture to that Habakkuk we have come to enter into you went into an oath with the tribes by which the earth was ruled I have come to enter into an oath and a covenant with you for my family by which you will lift us out can you say heavenly father establish the covenant of the sabbath and consecrate me into it establish it in my house in my life as an individual that I, as I step out here I carry the covenant of the God of heaven with me. Every shadow of darkness in southern Kaduna, their gates are broken in the name of Jesus. I declare their gates broken in the name of Jesus. I enter into the light of the Lord. Create a light on my, on my path. According to your word, that you create the light you create the darkness today separate between darkness and light in the name of Jesus let the spirit of creation take over now take over my life my going out and my coming in my day and my night I enter into this covenant with you in the name of Jesus Christ I didn't hear somebody say amen can you raise that right hand and declare therefore any altar sitting in judgment anywhere that carries my name let it die let it be broken let it be cut off open your mouth and curse that altar all over the land every spirit of limitation in your life let them scatter Has come, lay your hands on me. Till they have come, your day has come. Lay your hands, lay your hands on me. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost.
Therefore tonight, as the Lord liveth in heaven, and we live in the earth, I proclaim that every strange altar in your life has been broken. In the name of Jesus Christ. I release you with that proclamation. In the place of darkness, you will see light from now. Everywhere you enter, the Sabbath will command your enemies. They will give you what they didn't intend to bless you with. Today, I receive from God the Father among your families broken altars falling altars your light is released in the name of Jesus today I receive salvation for your spirits and your bodies everywhere there was an affliction let it disappear now I declare them consumed in the name of Jesus I declare them disappear in the name of Jesus. Let your body begin to reconfigure themselves. Let your healing take place wherever you are. By ah, here, O oh evil one, is an abomination for any child of God to be called a slave to anything. Today, I break every habit in your life that is a, that you are a slave to. Today, I declare you are no more a slave. Today, limitation in prosperity, I declare them swept away. You are redeemed in the name of Jesus. Father, search out darkness. And turn them into light. <laughs> I see the serpent coming out of his hole and running away. You are free in the name of Jesus. That serpentine spirit is destroyed tonight. Receive your miracle in the name of Jesus. The spies in your churches are going blind. They are. There is somebody, your chest has been killing you. You thought you were going to die. God said you are set free today. break your leg in the spirit. They break your leg in the spirit. Your kneecaps were taken away. Today I saw this. I see the restoration of your kneecaps. Receive your miracle in the name of Jesus. Ah. Somebody there is some kind of growth on your throat. The Lord said, I should tell you that he has just peeled it out. Amen. Something was to become a cancer. I saw the Lord cut off that cancer. Amen. Receive your miracle in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord said, I should tell you, tonight shall be a new beginning between you and him. Amen. They that spited you will bless you. Amen. They that shut the door against you shall by themselves open the door for you. Their laws are reversed in your life. Receive your miracle in the name of Jesus. Put your hand on your belly. I'm taking a deep breath from inside your belly. Just taking a deep breath inside your body and breathe out in the name of Jesus. I release your wells. To begin to rule everywhere you enter. Anywhere you enter, there will be supply for your life. 
I say that is the covenant of supply. The deep of the Lord shall make provision for your life. Taking a second deep breath in the name of Jesus. The old covenant is broken. The new has taken over. Receive your miracle in the name of Jesus. I see your enemies being crushed everywhere. I hear God say, within these seven weeks, I keep on hearing seven weeks. Seven weeks. Seven weeks. There shall be a displacement and replacement. Receive your miracle now. Everything that was stolen be replaced in the name of Jesus. the Lord say the land shall no longer be barren before you arise and enter the land whatsoever you ask the land shall answer thee go and be healed in your high places and be healed in your secret places be healed everywhere in the high places of the Lord there will be a healing pot waiting for you Receive your miracles in the name of Jesus. Can you just begin to bless the Lord somebody? Just give him glory. Thank you, Father. Amen. Put your hands back on your head. I say, Lord, today I proclaim and I confess that I have received back my crown the crown that was in the beginning on the head of Adam in these first four days of the sh of the sh Jesus Jesus like somebody said to me yesterday he said everywhere you enter the blessing of God shall board in that place that means the blessings of the Lord will grow in that place there will be no space for you no, no space to gather the blessings everywhere will be filled up Today your messengers are waiting for you outside Amen. to collect back what belongs to you Amen. and to do a handover ceremony. Amen. I hear the Lord say, everywhere that proves difficult now, anoint that place with oil and demand it to give you water. Amen. And it will break open for you. Amen. Otherwise an affliction will follow that place. Father, I have declared your judgments according to Exodus 21, verse 1. You said, set the judgments before the people. I have set the judgments. Let it follow them everywhere. Amen. Anyone that will not hearken to your voice in this covenant in their lives, let judgment follow that person. Amen. Let judgment follow that situation in the offices, in the marketplaces. Let your judgment sit everywhere in the name of Jesus. Can you begin to bless the Lord tonight? Just give him glory. Give him praise. Give him adoration. Give him adoration. Now, listen. If you know you need a creative miracle, while you are standing there, I'm not going to going to us to come for don't worry it's a sabbath of rest you need a creative miracle that means god needs to replace something a kidney he needs to replace something he needs to close a wound inside your body just put your hand either at that place or on your chest in case you cannot reach the place put your hand 
on your heart where your blood flow where your heart beat my father you have changed bones before and put new bones into people you said you will create this is the creative season today by the finger of God I lift away that affliction from your body and I declare it taken away in the name of Jesus today by the same finger I bring replacement into your body therefore let the spirit of engagement and disengagement take over your body now and bring healing to you can you say father thank you for your creative power I receive my deliverance and the blessing by the hand of the Lord. I receive the food of angels today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can somebody shout amen? amen. Can you breathe in and just shout hallelujah? Lift your hands up and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah a second time. Hallelujah. Five more times. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! 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 Amen. Let's give Jesus a big clap of faith. You may go back to your seat. Go and take an offering to the Lord. Let's give thanks together and rejoice and dance. And let's seal this with a sacrifice. A sacrifice. Let's seal this with a sacrifice of praise. A sacrifice of praise. I want to say thank you for allowing me to share this fellowship. For many years, I've not shared with the PFN in Jamal local government. This is my first time in many, many years. And I want to say thank you, sir, for the privilege. And I want to thank the whole ESCO, those of you who are there. Thank you very much. Thank you. The Lord remember you. Thank you. But please take a seat. Let's take a seat and give thanks. And let's seal it with sacrifice. Let's seal it with sacrifice. been faithful Lord from the ages far that is why your name is forevermore you've been faithful Lord take your seat faithful Lord from the ages far from the ages far that is why your name is Tell him this is a sacrifice of thanksgiving and rejoicing for the new year. Tell him it's a new year for me. It's my Shemitah. I thank you for the new Sabbath. One year of blessing and restoration. And let me tell you, the Lord told me that this one year of blessing and restoration shall last 10 years for you. So it's a one year that is going to lay foundation and continue to call the other years. They are attached. Everything that comes to you from now will be a blessing. Amen. Father, take this now. And we receive our new door that is opened by it. The effectual door. Thank you. We give you glory. Thank you for taking care of every enemy, spiritual and physical. Thank you. Including sin and unrighteousness. Including the salvation of our nation. We say thank you. The Lord said I should tell you, don't worry. This Sabbath will take care of the presidency and the government. Yeah. So don't worry about that. It's a Sabbath here. You will see how God releases his slaves and destroys strange altars, deep altars. So don't worry about anything. The whole atmosphere in the land is about to change. Go as you recover spiritually march into the land into any kind of harvest you want take it over eh? you went into ginger business go and buy more lands and do more ginger everybody will come to your land to buy Amen. any kind of business you are in go and enlarge the ground Amen. so again go back this year 
He says, Shemitah year. It's not supposed to be tenfold. It's a thousandfold. So go back and build your houses just by one year visitation. Oh, you don't understand what I'm talking about. Can you just bless the Lord and just thank him for today and give him glory. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. We will take some, a song unto the Lord and just begin to dance and drop him his offering. As Thank you, sir. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You will not be humiliated publicly. Yeah. You will not be humiliated secretly. Yeah. His fountain will keep you. His spirit will sustain you. Yeah. You will not lack instruction throughout this year. Yeah. The Lord will choose your steps for you. You will not hit your leg against his stone. The womb of the Lord will carry you. The wickedness of this life will not find you. His glory will cover you. His river will flow through you. The Lord God Almighty shall be your mainstay. You will eat and drink and have your whole being. Nothing in your life will be stolen. You will not die this year. You will not be famished this year. Your inheritance will not be stolen. I release the blessing of God upon your life. When you live, like he was patient with Jonah he will be patient with you he will help you to find your way 